Performing under pressure, whether it's me or anybody else, is the same. You know, I have the same pressures as anyone else. There's time, there's performance, there's financial. I mean, there, are, you know, there's deadlines. My pressures are not unique.、Um, the situations may be different, or you know, but but everybody has the same kinds of pressures. Um, but what I found, or what I find fascinating, is the interpretation of the stimuli. If, if, let me let me explain. So I was watching the Olympics this last summer Olympics, and I was amazed at how bad the questions were that the reporters would ask all the athletes. And almost always, they asked the same question: whether they were about to、uh, compete or after they competed. Were you nervous? Right? And to a T. All the athletes went, no, right. And what I realized is, it's not that they're not nervous; it's their interpretation of what's happening in their bodies. I mean, what what happens when you're nervous, right? Your heart rate starts to go. You're, you know, you sort of get a little tense. You get a little sweaty, right? You, you have expectation of what's coming, and we interpret that as I'm nervous. Now, what's the interpretation of excited? Your heart rate starts to go. You become. You're anticipating what's coming, right? You get a little sort of like tense. It's all the same thing. It's the same stimuli. Except these athletes, these these Olympic quality athletes, have learned to interpret the stimuli that the rest of us would say is nervous as excited. They all say the same thing: "No, I'm not nervous. I'm excited." And so I've actually practiced it just to tell myself when I start to get nervous that this is excitement,、yeah. you know. And so where when you I used to be, speak in front of a large audience and somebody'd say, "How do you feel?" I'd say, "A little nervous." Now when somebody says, "How do you feel?" I'm like, "Really excited, actually." And it it came from just sort of telling myself, no, 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 this is excitement, and it becomes a little bit automatic later on.、Um, but it's kind of a remarkable thing to deal with pressure by interpreting what your body is experiencing as excitement rather than nerves,、um, and it's really kind of effective. It makes you want to rush forwards rather than pull back, and yet it's the same experience. I talk to so many smart. Fantastic, ambitious, idealistic, hard-working kids, and they're right out of college. They're in their entry-level jobs, and I'll ask them, "How's it going?" And they'll say, "I think I'm going to quit." And I'm like, "Why?"、And、they say to me, "I'm not making an impact." I'm like, "You know, you've been here eight months, right?" They treat the sense of fulfillment or even love like it's a scavenger hunt, like it's something you look for. My millennial friends—they've gone through so many jobs. They're either getting fired. I mean, it was mutual, or they're quitting because they're not making an impact, or they're not finding the thing they're looking for. They're not feeling fulfilled, as if it's a scavenger hunt. Love, a job you find joy from, is not something you discover. It's not like I found love. Here it is. I found a job I love. That's not how it works. Both of those things require hard work. You are in love because you work very hard every single day of your life to stay in love. You find a job that brings you ultimate joy because you work hard every single day to serve those around you, and you maintain that joy. It's not a discovery, but the problem is the sense of impatience. It's as if an entire generation is standing at the foot of a mountain. They know exactly what they want. They can see the summit. What they can't see is the mountain. This large, immovable object. That doesn't mean you have to do your time. That's not what I'm talking about. Take a helicopter, climb. I don't care. But there's still a mountain. Life, career fulfillment, relationships are journeys. The problem is, this entire generation has an institutionalized sense of impatience, and do they have the patience to go on the journey to maintain love, to feel fulfilled, or do they just quit and onto the next, dump and onto the next? Ghost and on to the next. I'm at my best when I'm around people who believe what I believe. I know it seems silly, but、um, I try very, very hard to sort of stack the deck, you know, to put myself in a position of strength.、Um, so, for example, you know, somebody asked me just yesterday, "Have you ever had sort of a bad, you know, engagement?" And I was thinking to myself, "I'm like, not really." But it's not because I'm some sort of sort of genius or anything, anything like that. It's because I stack the deck. It's because I want to be there. I want to be around people who want me there. In other words, if I'm somebody's tenth choice, and like you know, I'll probably turn it down.、Um, whereas if I'm their first choice, they really want me there, and so I'm, I'm more likely to have a good engagement. They're supportive of me. I'm supportive of them, 
And so, um, yeah, I'm at my best when I, when I stack the deck, when I choose to be in an environment where, where my strengths are, are there.